Hi everybody, I'm Dana Levinson and welcome back to On The DL. You're watching AskTheDoctor.com's health and wellness series. And today is Wednesday and we have a special guest today. Uh, we have an NHLer joining us today talking about what life is like in isolation and being a professional hockey player. Chris Tanev is joining us right now from Vancouver. He is coming live and I'm excited to meet you virtually, Chris, and I'm excited to chat with you. Hey, Chris. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? Awesome. How about yourself? I'm fantastic. And I have to tell you that my credibility in my house right now is like up here because I am chatting with you. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think it's going to go that much higher. Talking no, 110%. I have a house full of teenage boys. And I told them that we were chatting today and they were, they said, no way, mom, that is the coolest interview ever. So I'm hoping I keep it at the cool factor and I ask you all the right things, but I am genuinely very interested in hearing how you're doing. How are you? I'm great. Um, obviously, I think it, it's different for everyone. I mean, it's a different time for everyone, but I'm, I'm doing well. I'm, you sort of fall into a routine and um, try to stick to it as much as you can without I mean, without doing too much outside of the house, but I mean, there's the weather here has been awesome, so it's it's oh, nice. You can, I'm, I'm out in Vancouver, so it's uh, yeah, it's, be, it's been beautiful the last month. So you are a Toronto boy, so you know what the weather can be like here in April and May. It's very hit and miss, of course. So you're lucky to be in Vancouver. Yeah, I am. It's um, I mean, the last month and a half here has been it's been incredible. So. It's nice to be able to go for walks and walk around the ocean and see you all. And it's, um, it's definitely a big plus. The ocean. Just that. How lovely. Just that. Exactly. So, so who have you been isolating with? I know you have your beloved dog, Riley. Yeah, just me, me Riley, and my fiance. And, and that's it. So, I mean, oh, that's amazing. Um, yeah. That's just, amazing. Do you have Riley with you right now? I can get him. Yeah. I'll find him. Just, I want to see your beautiful Riley. I saw a picture. I thought, I'm a, I'm a huge dog person, and we are in the middle of negotiations in my house right now when it comes to what dog and when we're getting a dog. And one of my sons loves hugs. Yeah, but, I mean, you can't go wrong with them. Hug. You can't go are wrong with a hug. Your, are we getting a tour of your house right now, Chris? Basically, yeah. Uh, That's awesome. On. Thank you. How nice. Lovely. Where's, oh, Riley, look at you. Wait, let's see you. Where's that, let's see you. Sorry. Where's he? Oh, 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 oh. oh, what a love. Wait, <laughs> how old is Riley? Riley is eight. Eight? Yes, eight years oh, old. God. Oh my God. Hi, Riley. Oh, he's, Say he's, hi. Riley's a boy, correct? Yes, he is. Oh, so cute. You just want to squeeze his face. So you have some joy. That's nice. At least you have some good company in isolation. Yeah, I think, he, I think he's sick of us more than we're sick of him, but he likes to be alone a lot. What are you doing to entertain yourself these days? Oh, working out a lot. Um, oh, good. Cook it, working out and cooking. I think that's uh, pretty much what we've been doing most of the time. And then obviously watching some Netflix and watching some shows and I'm, I'm going to ask you about Netflix in a second. Cause I was um, reading up about some of the things that you've been watching. I find it very interesting, but I, I, I think the big question, which a lot of people would ask someone who plays in the NHL, uh, particularly this time of year, there should be playoffs. Correct. Yes. You're yeah. not playing. So yeah. you're not skating, you're not competing. Are you feeling just this empty part? Like right now, you're feeling this emptiness, not being able to skate and play and compete? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I, I think everyone wishes that we, we could be out there and um, mm -hmm. and be playing and competing and just just like any other year. But I mean, it's uh, obviously it's a tough situation. And ho hopefully we're back and I don't know, at, at some point this summer and it's safe for everyone to play, but I mean, yeah, like you yeah, did, fingers, fingers, crossed. fingers crossed for sure. And I mean, it's gonna, I think a lot of us are itching to get back and, and hopefully we can. How do you keep in shape right now? Um, I mean, I have, 
our team was awesome and and they sort of sent out like care packages to everyone basically so i mean we have a bunch of weights from the arenas a bunch of kettlebells and then we i have a one of those uh, assault wind bikes here and then I'll, I'll, I'll run a lot so i mean i'll work out i'll lift four or five times a week and i'll bike and then run and and then i i do pilates quite a bit so i sort of i got into that uh last year or two and it's it's been awesome really you're into pilates yeah it's, it, i find it's helped so much I, I wish i started doing it earlier in my career what about pilates do you like um it's it's all about your like your hips and your groins and your low abs and, and engaging everything so i mean it, it helps with the stability and and i mean hockey players tend to have hip and groin issues so it, it helps maintain and, and keep everything strong mm. I've wanted to try Pilates for a while. I do so many things and I keep saying to myself, I can't take on another activity, but that's on my list when all of this, it's on my list. I want it. I would like to try Pilates. Yeah, for sure. I, yeah, I would okay. recommend, I would recommend it to anyone. I, I find really? it's, it's okay. very tough. Yeah. That's amazing. So you are working out, you're keeping in shape, obviously. I mean, it's, it's a part of, it's like getting up and breathing. You have to, you've yeah. got to do it, right? So you're keeping, you're keeping that, which is great. I mean, I, I assume that's helping you mentally as well and emotionally exercise. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yeah. something that you have to do. And I mean, we got to be prepared to come back at really any, any point. You don't know when, when they can potentially say you have to be back or when training camp might start and, and things like that. So, I mean, you don't, you don't want to fall too far out of shape where you don't have time to, to get back into, into so, I mean, it's going to be quickly back into game shape if we end up coming back so I mean trying to stay and, and main, maintain your weight maintain your sort of as, as much as you can your your game shape which is tough obviously without skating yeah, so. yeah it's hard because obviously you're not skating and uh, your whole routine is off right so training is are you are you training with the team virtually at all or are there any kind of virtual training sessions or it's all on your own uh, most of it's on our own, they, but they, they send us programs. So, I mean, there's, there's an app that we use where well, they'll, they'll shoot out guys individually each a program every day of the week. And then we'll, we have like a, we have optional like Zoom yoga classes and, and things like that. Really? Zoom yoga classes? Yeah. That's amazing. The yeah, connection. So I mean, <laughs> Zoom yoga classes. I love it. Someone just asked if you're, ro if you're rollerblading at all. I'm not rollerblading right now. Um, I I don't know. I, I don't think it translates too much to the ice. I've, I've played roller hockey my whole life growing up till I was about 18. Um, and, and when you rollerblade too much, I find it's getting back on the ice. It, it's a different stride and, and it yes. makes it a little awkward. So, I mean, it's it's a tough transition, I find. So you said you were doing some cooking. What kind of cooking are you doing? Oh, uh, everything. I mean, um, I, I love cooking in general. So, I mean, it's sort of a... Wait, 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 rewind. What'd you say? You like cooking in general? Yeah. I mean, I, we, we try to cook here as much as, as we can. So, I mean, it's... I love uh, that. And I know you guys have had Mudo on the show quite a bit. So, I mean, we, we've learned a, lo a lot from him working out with Gary and, and eating his food every day. So, I mean, it's... um, You try to stay healthy and, and eat properly. So, I mean, as far as nutrition wise, it's almost easier. It's easier to stay healthy right now, as far as what you're eating, because you're, we're cooking almost every meal and um, you're not on the road half the time and you don't have to eat out all the time. So, I mean, when you can cook, it's, it's, it's easier to stay healthy. I know chef Andy had um, logged on and was watching at the beginning. I don't know if he's still watching, but I'm sure he'd be so happy to hear that you're eating well he always finds that inspiring and we have been working together now for a few weeks and I've changed the way I've been eating and I feel so much better. Just little things I have tweaked in my diet and I feel mm -hmm. so much better. I have always felt like I've been, I've eaten healthy, but this is really taking it to a new level. So I love hearing that from an athlete because you just feel, it just feels validating, which is amazing. Uh, what's one of the things that you're cooking that you love? Ooh, um, I mean, I like, I like making ribs. I like making steaks. Um, my fiance makes some good soups and, and chilies that are, that are fairly healthy. So we've last week or so we've got more into that where we've been 
trying to make some healthy stews and healthy chilies and, and soups where we can sort of munch on and snack on all day. Um, sort of at the start of the quarantine, we were cooking a little, I think a little more, some more chickens and roasted chickens and, and steaks. Good. And we've, we've sort of transitioned into some, some healthier soups and things like that. We're trying to switch it up as much as we can. So are you, um, are you missing your, your team? That must be a huge part of this too. You must be missing seeing everybody. Yeah, I mean it's uh, when you when you see them every day um, for for almost the whole year, you get you get pretty close. And I mean, you see them more than more than your family in a lot of cases. Sure. So, I mean, it's uh, it's tough to be away from everyone, but I think everyone does does well and keep in touch. And I mean, there's so much social media out there; it's easy for guys to to stay in touch and and have a little here and there. And um, Yeah, for sure. Um, someone who just sent a, uh, a question and asked, how many hours a day are you working out? Um, it, it depends on the day. So, I mean, it's, I, I, you sort of try to go into summer mode, um, obviously minus the skating, but I mean, I'll usually do a lift in the morning. That's an hour, hour and a half. And then I'll either go for a, do a bike ride or, or go on a run. And then a couple times a week in the afternoons, um, I, I'll do Pilates for an hour. So, I mean, it, it depends I, on the day. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Some, some, some days it's four or five hours. Some days it's an hour, hour and a half. So, wow. And may I ask, is your fiance from Toronto as well? No, she's from um, Rochester, New York, actually. Oh, so. Okay, nice. Very nice. So it's nice that you guys are together. And yes. because your family, you have a brother in Pittsburgh, correct? I do, yes. And your family's here in the Toronto area? Yeah, uh, my mom, mom and dad are, they're, they're split up, but they're both in the uh, Toronto area, yes. Right, so you're all in different places right now. So that's also hard when everybody's going, the whole world is going through this, and then you're all in different spots. But you're with your fiancé and Riley, which is also great. Um, I wanted to ask you about some of the stuff that you're doing other than working out and cooking. Um, I was reading that you have been watching Netflix. You've been watching a couple different shows. Um, you watch Tiger Kings? I did, I yeah. I couldn't get through it. I, like I, I sort of struggled to get through it at the start, but then I, I almost got, I, I sort of couldn't comprehend that on yeah. what was going on with these people. And then yeah. it, it sort of like glued me in to, I needed to see more and, and understand what they were doing and, and going through. But I mean, yeah, we, we watched that and, fairly quickly actually and i think the other one is it ozarks is that how you pronounce it I think. yeah Ozarks. Yeah. Or... yeah my husband was watching that as well and you watched unorthodox i did yeah so did i i was glued glued i couldn't put that down that was really? uh, surprisingly very good yes um, we... are, did you like that one we did, yeah. I didn't. Um, my fiance sort of put it on, and I didn't think I would like it, and yeah. I, I ended up getting glued to it. And we we watched them all quickly. And that's the best, right? When you're watching something and you're so surprised. Yeah. Surprised by that? Are you doing any reading? Is there anything that you could re recommend for people? Um, I've I'm not much of a reader. I've sort of so, sort of started to get back into doing some schooling, actually. So I mean, I'm hmm. getting back into that. Um, but my. Cool. Kendra reads a lot. I mean, I could ask, what's a good book you just read? Long Bright River. A Long Bright River. Apparently, okay. it's very good. So she was, she was into that, yeah. Okay. And you just said you're getting back into school. What are you, what are you doing with school? Yeah, I've just taken a, started to take in a personal finance class and sort of, I didn't graduate when I went, I went to school in the States and I, I left early and didn't graduate, so I figured in, in the downtime right now, I'd, I'd get back into it a little bit. I want to ask you about school in one sec, but I'm getting questions. I don't know if you can see the questions coming in. Uh, two people had asked you to show Riley again. <laughs> and another person um, had asked if you or anybody from your team uh, are getting updates as to when you'll play again. I know it's probably Yeah, not I mean, it's... Uh, I, we're looking for updates, I think, just yeah. as much as everyone else. So exactly. it, it's so it's so much unknown right now. Um, exactly. I, I mean, I think it's going to be based 
it's going to be up to the governments and, and all the health ministries and, and things like that. But I mean, uh, I, I read that the health minister of BC approved Vancouver to be a host city if that potentially happens. So, I mean, that's, that's some good news. That's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's, that's about it. I mean, I, we're all, we're all in the same boat. I think we want to find out a date or, or potentially when we could be back, but I mean, it's um, sort of a waiting game right now. Here's another great question. Someone just asked, how would you feel about playing, but playing in an empty arena? So you're playing basically for a television camera, but not for a live yeah. audience. How do you I feel mean, about it's that? obviously not ideal. It's, it'd be very different. Um, yeah. But I mean, at, at this point in, in the world right now, I think everything is, is going to be different and, and people are going to have to make sacrifices. And, and if we do come back and play and it's going to be, it's going to be in front of empty arenas. And I, I think at, at some point you're going to have to get used to that. Do you think that would be sustainable or do you think it would change the game, ultimately change the game? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know how long it could go on for, but I, I think in a short period of time, it, it would be fine. I think a lot of people at home would, would definitely tune in to watch games. And I mean, I think as far as that, there'd be a lot of viewers and I mean, the atmosphere and things may not be the same, but I mean, it's, it's definitely something, it, I think something a little bit, something's better than nothing. So I agree. I agree with you. And as I said, I have a, a house full of teenage boys or I'm not teenage girls too. love hockey as well. Yeah. Uh, but they they're watching reruns. Like yeah. hockey is always on in the background in my house. And I was mm -hmm. like, what are you guys watching? There's no hockey on right now. So they're just watching reruns of hockey. So it wouldn't matter if it was if to them, it just get you guys back on the ice. That's how they're feeling. And I think the majority of hockey fans are feeling the same. I'm not belittling the the experience of a live hockey game because that in itself is incredible but like you said just get back on the ice and start playing right yeah I, I think I feel the same way I, I think it's, it's gonna go it's gonna go through transition and, and small steps at a time and, and I think that would be the first step so are you in touch with I know your brother's in Pittsburgh and he's also uh, in the NHL is there anybody else are you in touch with any other NHLers other than your team members and your brother yeah, I mean, I, I talked to quite a few guys throughout the league, and I mean, it's uh, I think ev everyone's in the same boat, whether guys have gone back home to Europe or back home to where they live in either Canada or, or U.S. So, I mean, there's uh, everyone sort of all over the place. Some some teams have guys that are – most of their team has stayed in the location of the team. Some guys yeah. have – a lot of some guys have teams where most of the most of the guys have left. So I mean, it's I think every team's in a little bit of a different boat. Were are most of your teammates in Vancouver, or did they go back? Did they go um, back? A lot. A lot of guys have gone back and forth, or sorry, not back and forth, but back to where they where they're from. So I mean, it's right. we have a lot of guys. We have a few Americans, a few Europeans, a, a bunch of guys from Toronto. Yeah. So, I mean, it's we got we have a pretty good mixed bag of guys. How come you didn't want to come back to Toronto? Um, I, we we just thought that the situation in BC was a little bit better than it was in Ontario, and then mm -hmm. um, the the weather here was awesome. So I mean, if if we could get out and we live right on the ocean here, and we could take Riley for some walks and enjoy some sunshine, it would be better than um, what was going back home, back, going on back home in in Toronto. So I I can tell you wholeheartedly, and I'm not just saying this because I'm speaking to you live. But if I had the opportunity to be by the ocean, be where there are mountains, I would leave Toronto in two <laughs> seconds and isolate myself somewhere there for sure. So I I only ask because people were asking if you had plans to come back. Um, what are your plans in terms of school? So you said you're taking a course for finance because you didn't finish? Yeah, I, I only went to university for a year and then I left. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just slowly starting to get back into it and and see where it goes. I mean, hopefully it goes well and then I can sort of snowball into snowball that into maybe graduating a few years down the road. But, I mean, it's still, still a long way. Were you going to do that anyway and you just got a jump start during – this yeah, stuff. I mean, I, I sort of wanted to go back. I've, I've put it off for so long now, and um, I, I felt like with the potential of us maybe not coming back or maybe getting a, a few months off, it was a good time to, to maybe get back into it a lot 
a little bit because we have we have so much free time now. So I don't want to embarrass you, uh, but I'm going to embarrass you. Uh, there are two huge compliments um, doing some research about you. Um, one, you being considered one of the best defensemen in the league. The second, you're considered one of the smartest guys in the NHL. I didn't know that, but yes. I, I don't know. I don't know who voted on that. But I mean, I'll <laughs> That's your it. reputation that you are a very intelligent guy, very smart guy. And so you're talking about finances. So what, what would your plans be once you are not playing anymore? Do you have, I do you have these ideas of going into finance, going into the world of that, that kind of, that world? Potentially, but I mean, I, um, I'd like to stay in the game when I'm done and, and, and hopefully I can play another six, seven years and, um, and, and stretch my career out. But I mean, it's, I think having, having education and, and knowledge about things can go a long way in, in, in whatever career you choose. I haven't really dialed anything in yet, but I mean, as I, as I get older, I think I'll, I'll sort of, I'll look into that a little bit more. Uh, someone just, someone just said that you are an intellectual, which is very nice. And you're getting, Riley's getting a lot of love here. We're getting a lot yeah. of love here. Riley gets, I think, does Riley get a lot of love when you go out in the world? People yeah. stop Riley. Oh, yeah. Riley's, uh, Riley's more popular than I am. So, I mean, it's. Uh... I appreciate you bringing Riley onto the camera. He's really making my day for sure. We're going back and forth between all the different breeds. Pug was right up there. I don't know. I mean, if you want a low maintenance dog that likes to sleep and eat and, and play and snuggle and pugs your, your type of dog. Okay. He's up there. We were thinking potentially a golden. I had huskies before. So I'm into like big furry. Yeah. It's, I mean, that's very different. I mean, he's furry and sheds a lot, but I mean, I think they're definitely different than a, a golden or a husky. That's for sure. So what are your uh, plans for the next couple of weeks? What are you what are you thinking right now? Yeah, same I mean same same thing I've been doing. Um okay. working out and yep. trying to trying to stay positive and uh make the best of the situation. I mean I I think a lot of people are in, in the same boat that I am in, in the real world and I mean it's there's a lot of people in worse situations. So I mean it's it's hundred percent. Think yeah, I mean you put yourself you put, try to put it in perspective and, and make the best of the situation. And when you realize there's people going through a lot worse, I think it makes it, uh, it makes it easier. Thank you. And, you know, I really appreciate you taking the time to speak with us today. There's been a lot of people um, firing off so many questions. I can't even keep them. I can't even, um, they're going so fast that I can't even <laughs> read them all to you, but there's a lot of, a lot of hearts, a lot of love for you, a lot of compliments and people waving. So uh, you are missed for sure. And I hope that you and Kendra and Riley stay healthy and get back on the ice as soon as possible. And we'll be watching for you and um, rooting you on. And uh, maybe we can check in with you in a few weeks or maybe in a couple months, but you've been awesome. Thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate you taking time to speak with me today. Sounds good. Thank you for having me. Okay, be well and feel good. Bye, Riley. Bye, thank you. Take care. Okay, take care. Bye. Bye, everybody.